Babangida survived Gideonoka's school by the whiskers. He almost lost his life. When he recovered from the attack, one of the first things he did was to have a meeting with Julius Bega PLC and begin the process of the award of contract for the construction of a more protected, sophisticated, but highly restricted residence and workplace for the president of the country. In back in history, we will take you back in time to the events that occurred in the historical past. In this edition, we will take you back to the reasons General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, military head of state of Nigeria, moved to Asorok Villa in Abuja barely two years before the end of his administration. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida was Nigeria's military head of state from 1985 to 1993. For the whole of 1985, 1986, 1987, 1988, 1989, and 1990, Babangida lived in and worked from Dodan Barracks in Lagos. At that time, Lagos was the federal capital of the Federation of Nigeria, and the office of the president was located in Dodan Barracks. Dodan Barracks is one of the oldest military barracks in Nigeria. Past military heads of state also lived here and worked from here. Being a military barracks, several military officers and men together with their families also lived in the barracks. This being the case, there was frequent movement of people into and out of the barracks day in, day out. In that process, the damn barracks became porous and susceptible to attacks. And in the course of time, several heads of state have been sacked by soldiers who planned and executed their coup from within the barracks. Dodan Barracks was both a highly sophisticated and highly protected enclave, but ironically, it was highly susceptible and could easily fall to attack because most of the attacks were planned and executed from within the barracks. Babangida was aware of this reality about the barracks, but he had his own strategy, which worked for him for several years. There were pockets of attempts to topple him, but none of these attempts shook him like the attempts by Major Gideon Oka and his associates in April 1990. Gideon's coup was the coup that almost took the life of Babangida. The date was 22nd April 1990. It was on a Sunday. It was at about 1.40 or 1.45 a.m. Nigerian time, a time when many people had gone to bed. Dodan Barracks, the most fortified government institution at the time, was attacked by a group of army officers whose mission was to remove Babangida from power, dead or alive, and effect a change of leadership in the country. The coup plotters gained access into the barracks and took strategic positions. One of their major targets was the residence of General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida. The residence came under ferocious attack and almost every part of it was destroyed by random shooting by the coup plotters. The attack was so ferocious and intense and the bedroom of the head of state was almost completely destroyed and the coup plotters thought that Babangida had been killed by the gunfire. Unknown to the coup plotters, Babangida and members of his family had been ferried out of the building by Lieutenant Colonel UK Bellu, who was Babangida's ADC at the time. It has been reported that at the time the coup plotters gained access to the barracks, UK Bellu was sleeping in his quarters, which was directly opposite the residence of the head of state. It was the sound of the gunfire that woke him up. 
how UK Bello breathed the art to cross over to the residence of his master to move him and his family to safety remains a mystery till today. Babangida and his family were ferried across the fence and taken to safety in the neighborhood. It is reported that Babangida and his family were taken to the house of one of Babangida's friends outside the barracks. Babangida was safe. So also were members of his family. But Babangida and his wife, Mariam, would never forget the experience of the said dates. Their body and souls were terrified beyond description, having come face to face with death. Having secured the safety of the first family, Yukebelu returned to the barracks. His mission was to engage the coup plotters, chase them away, and take over the seat of power to ensure the return of his boss. At the time of his return, the coup was in full gear. Everywhere was charged. Bello did not know that his return to the barracks would mark the end of his life. He found his way to one of the armored tanks and entered the tank prepared to engage the coup plotters. Bello began to press the buttons in the tank, but unknown to him, the firing pins of the armored tanks had been removed by the maintenance engineer who last serviced the tank. The said engineer did so on purpose as he was later identified as one of the coup plotters. While Bello was in the armored tank, he was sighted by the coup plotters who got closer and shot him at close range. Bello died instantly inside the armored tank. At this time, Radio Nigeria had been taken over by some of the coup plotters. And Major Gideon Oka was making his broadcast to the nation, announcing the coup and the reasons for the coup. Gideon and his men were eventually overpowered and captured by the team led by Lieutenant General Sanea Bacha, who was Babangida's right-hand man, trusted friend, and colleague and close ally in military uniform. Abacha took charge of the seat of power and made an initial broadcast to the nation and assured everyone to be calm as the situation was under control. He then made contact with the head of state who then made his way back to the barracks and also made a speech to the nation reassuring everyone that he is still the man in power and that the coup plotters had been dislodged. Nothing had shaken Babangida like the events of the Gideonokas coup. The coup plotters were immediately rounded up and charged to a military court martial. The situation was under control, but it appears that Babangida was no more comfortable operating from the barracks. His life had been closely threatened and he was not sure of what could happen next. He fortified his security, but still did not trust the Dan barracks anymore. Babangida then commissioned the construction giant Julius Bega PLC to give him an architectural design of a presidential lodge comprising the official workplace of the president. He added that the lodge is to be sited at Abuja, which had already been proposed as the new federal capital territory of Nigeria in 1976 by the government of General Motala Mohammed. For Babangida, the presidential lodge needed to be constructed without any delay whatsoever to fast track the relocation of the seat of power from the Dan Barracks to Abuja and to further fast track the relocation of other arms of government to the new federal capital territory. Julius Bega went to work, used the best set of architects and engineers. They literally worked day and night, and on the dot of 13 months, the villa was completed and ready for habitation. Specifically, the construction work started on October 13, 1989, and was completed and handed over to the government of Nigeria on November 1, 1991. What was handed over was a magnificent edifice, comprising the office of the president, and the seat of power and also comprising 
the official residence of the president and members of his family. It was, and still is, a structure to behold. President Ibrahim Badamazi Babangida then moved into the villa on December 12, 1991. He thus became the first head of the government of Nigeria to live in Asorok Villa. Recall that one of the issues with Dodan Barracks was the fact that the barracks also served as residential quarters for military officers and their families, thus making movement in the barracks difficult to control. Asorok Villa was built in a way as to avoid such situation. The villa is more protected and highly restricted to the extent that no one is allowed to go in unless you are on appointment. Since the relocation of the residence of the president to Asorok, the violent takeover of government which characterized the Dodan barracks has not been witnessed in the villa since 1991 till date. In moving the seat of power from Dodan Barracks to Asurok, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida had indeed provided a lasting solution to what was becoming a perennial problem to Nigeria. Thanks for watching this episode of Back in History. And do remember to subscribe to the channel for regular notifications on every new video.